things. Okay, there we go. If you want to come in a bit, um, and then I can show you various things. Right, now, this, um, what I'm about to show you really is to do with um, wood, wood, wood cut or lino cut. So it's much more the crude process rather than it's not wood engraving. Wood engraving does use some of these tools. That is, this is a wood engraving tool, which is very, sh well, it's relatively, actually, it's quite blunt, but it, um, it would, go, would go through, I think, if I pushed it, um, which is to make a very fine line. I still use it as a cutting tool, but a wood engraving is a very, very fine, like a steel engraving, like, um, and more akin to fine line etching. Um, paper, yeah, or a uh, dry point, so you could scratch on, you know, scratch onto yeah. a, onto a plate with a perspex or or gouge, copper. You don't gouge out. No, the thing about you get a burr in, so you scratch, and then the, then the then the metal actually comes out, yeah. and that's a place where the ink could stay. Um, right. Dry point is absolutely wonderful, but this is much more, if you like, clumsy and chunky. But it's also far more, um, I think, poetical. Um, uh, it's about more shaped line uh, in a sculptural way. So I'll just go through some of the tools. Um, so that's a, a, what I would call a cutter. Um, and then you get uh, V-shaped tools. So that's quite a large V-shaped tool. And then you'll Sorry, get... Can I... You can hold it. Yeah, no, why are they all... They're not... They're not fully round. Is oh, I. That fits that. it. They're called mushroom handles, and therefore it can sit. The whole point is it sits in the palm of your hand. Yeah, and the, this flat bit is that. I wonder why they got this flat bit, or is there a? The flat bit is because look, it's the the point is yeah. down, and then the oh. the round is there, and then I can put my finger on oh, that. Oh, I see. Yeah, you can close. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I try. Yeah. Yeah. So it definitely look by doing yeah. that, it's locked. It, it locks you. Rather okay, than it so rotate, then that's yeah. uh, that's um, a much finer. Rather, so that, rather than it rotates. Okay, yes, yeah. and then yeah. then I start off with um, mm. some rounds. So it starts off with a a very see if I, oh, I can't even show it. I mean, so it's a very fine round. Then we go mm. up to a next next one, uh, and then yeah. you slowly go up <coughs> to another one. Next round. Yeah. And then finally, more of a scooper. Mm, a gouge. Now that's just some. I mean, I've got other ones, but these are the main ones I use. Now, this isn't used so much, and necessarily that is just removing large bits. But what I find I use, I find I use the Vs a considerable amount. So therefore, you've got the the large V and um, the small V, um, and the two two different types of rounds works well so that and then of course then this um, as you'll see in a minute is, is for getting right into it because it's, it's got a point so if, if it breaks the point you just got to find oh, it down again fine. and get it so it is quite a point and quite sharp now the thing about um, thing about lino is it comes in it comes in different types but I'll come to that in a minute the most important thing about um, working in lino is your drawing so, um, and the way I, there's many different ways of working lino, but the way I'm going to show you is it's all about working it out in a drawing first. If you haven't worked it out in a drawing first, you're probably going to get into a mistake. And once you've made a mistake, it's gone. You can't, you can't get it right. You can't, you can't put glue on it. Because as soon as you start printing with it, the because the, um, it's on a, a nipping press, it comes down and then it pulls it up. If it pulls it up, I assure you, it will pull up anything you've glued. Um, so what we start with, so I, I've got a, a block that I'm working on at the moment. Um, and there's many blocks around the exhibition, so you can see they're, they're finished blocks. But I've got a half finished one. I've got one that isn't, isn't um, uh, cut at all. And then I've got one that's, that's finished being cutting of a recent series I'm working on. So if I just show you this drawing, um, so this is a um, this is how I I, I, I start. Um, it just so happens this is this is part of a, a Milton the, part of the Milton series I'm working on. So if I show you, um, so there you go. So this is a, a charcoal pencil. It actually um, 
if you've read Milton's Paradise Lost, this is where um, um, Satan has been thrown down into hell with all these, these third of heaven uh, uh, angels, angelic beings, and they're, um, they've woken up now and they've realised that they're in this terrible place. And they start building a city. And of course, they start building lots of sculptures and things to, um, to celebrate him, uh, their leader. Um, so that's what's going on for me. And it's kind of thunderstorming and, um, and you've got these different kind of size of beings too, size of angels. So you've got big ones and small ones and there's this huge sculpture being built. So that's the way I begin. So um, for me, um, so, I've ha so I have a drawing. Then what I do, um, I then make a, um, you look at it, so I then make a tracing of that drawing. But I make a tracing of that drawing so it has newspaper print behind it. So what it means is all the time, so I trace it and then I can draw on it with, so I can see it as a working image. Now already it's changed quite a bit mm -hmm. from that drawing. So, so that's made just over this. Just, just straight, straight over. Through, yeah. Straight so, through, yeah. So if I put that on it. Yeah, you can just trace pieces straight through. Okay, just yeah. straight. You've made it more precise in the process. Really. So what you can see on there, you can see it's um, yeah. it's virtually on top. Yeah. Okay. So okay. Trace it through. So I trace it through. Then, because I've got newspaper print behind, I just fold it the other way around. So now what I have yeah. is it back to front. And now I've got it back to the front. I know if I cut it that way, it's going to be exactly the same as I wanted it in the drawing. Because yeah. everything's back to front. So the whole point is, what you've got here is, um, and even in this drawing, if I'm looking at it, I'm, it's great. It's like yeah. when you've got a problem in a painting, if you don't know how to resolve it, look in a mirror. Mm -hmm. And you'll see, you'll, you'll look at it differently and you go, oh, I can see the exact problem that's wrong with it. <laughs> so, so what you have there is, um, exactly how I'm cutting it. Now, so here is, um, see if I can, I don't know if I can, there, can you see it? So this is it in progress. Now already, if you look at that, you'll see how different it is. So what I've done, um, I draw it onto the block, and then I start changing it because I think, okay, that is like that's my canvas now. And then I think, okay, that's I don't believe in that. I don't believe in that. I don't believe in that. And um, how do you actually fit all of it onto the block? Okay, it's just on freehand on the. Uh, so what I do, I get some carbon paper, oh. and I put carbon paper on onto the block. Yeah, and then you just trace. And then I just trace it with um a, a, with a, a pencil, a rotary you know, um. What do you call those pencils? You know, yeah, you know, propelling propelling, pencils. propelling yeah, pencils. pencils. So you need a really sharp pencil. We need to keep sharpening it and draw everything that's there. Once you've got everything that's there. Um, that line of six to MDF. Yeah, yeah, okay. So what I've done here is I've put um, the brown lino, I've glued it on with just PVA, cheap PVA you can buy, you know, kids stuff. Um, you have a bit of stability. Yeah. And then put it onto a bit of MDF. That means I can cut, and as you can see, um, I cut very, very deeply. Because mm. what I'm interested in, I'm interested in shaped line. As opposed to, um, I'm not interested in, well, the ink could go there, it could go here. I'm interested in exactly defining where I want it and where I don't want it. Because what, so what I've got is I've got a continuous amount of positive and negative spaces. Yeah. And some of them are, are going to be, of course, white, and some of them are going to be black. So it's the rhythm of the shapes of um, dark shapes against light shapes. And it's the way the line is not boring. So I can shape and define the line and thin the line, and I can carve it down. So it really is very sculptural. And in, some, in the 19th century, they called these sculptures. Sculpt. Um, on the block, they would say sculpt by whoever the artist or um, you know a helper or something. Now, some people will skim it in different ways, and therefore the ink lies differently. So therefore, every print slightly different. 
um, or they like different kind of surfaces. What I'm interested in is the way um, I'm, I can allow different sizes of line and different qualities to define a rhythm within a rectangle. Now, now one thing you'll notice, I'm using kind of, um, in this, I'm using indelible pen, which is um, like a permanent marker. So different types of permanent marker. Um, and then I'm using pencil over it. So I'm constantly, I, I want to see what the black's going to do. Because the brown, everywhere there's brown is going to go. So that's yeah. all going to go. Yeah. The only thing that's going to remain are black lines. So I want to know exactly what's left all the time. And if the rhythm's not working, so you trace over it with a with a pen with rock pen, fine rock pen. With with a um yeah, a marker mark, pen. Yeah, marker pen. Then you you must sort of blacken out bits of it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. With a. And then I go. Oh no, I don't pen. like that. So then I pencil over it and I go. Oh oh, I don't okay, like so that you, either. You so I then go back over black. So I'm constantly going backwards and forwards over things. Yes. And then I start cutting when I'm really happy. Only when I'm happy. I don't think. Oh, let's get started. Oh, you're doomed. Because you go, oh no, I've changed my mind, and it's gone. And the only way you could do it would be to cut out the bit, rip it out, and glue in another bit. And I assure you, you will have a line. Anyway. Sorry, just um, the lino. Is, is lino lino, or is no. there like artistic lino? Yeah. There is. Um, basically, um, if, this were, if, this was, uh, if this was wood, if this was um, like a, a plywood, it, it's, it's good. But it will, it will do your wrist in after a while. Very hard. Because um, it's harder and it's got a grain to it. Yes. The thing about lino, which is lovely, is that you can go anywhere you like. There's no grain. There. There's no grain. No. But this is brown lino, which is the old type of lino, yeah. which is called fu it's fully baked lino. It's basically linseed oil. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was but oil. most of the stuff you get these days is is what's called half baked lino. It's yeah. for kiddies, yeah. and it's grey. The only problem is it's the only thing that's available mostly in this country. So I get mine from Belgium. Um, so, like especially, so it's fully baked. So it's fully baked. And if not make it harder? Yeah, and if, if anyone lino is out there looking, I'm talking to you, uh, <laughs> could you stop m making grey lino? Because us artists don't want it, because it's, <laughs> it's useless. Because if you put it in a press, it disintegrates. Okay, so it's not strong enough. It's not strong enough, it's weak. So if you do as fine stuff as this, it collapses. So I've done a thing that I spent four or five days on, um, and um, you put it in a press, and it um, on the third pull even, it's just whole oh, bits yeah. are just falling out. Oh. I'll tell you that's yes. a grown man to cry. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, I found that uh, with white spirit, if you ever want to clean it, which I don't, I don't clean my plates because white spirit also seems to dissolve grey lino. So yeah, I've yeah. seen bits just fall off and it melt. Which is another yeah, thing that's it's enough it's to make oil, a, a, a grown man to cry. <laughs> anyway, so um, so the whole thing of um, of this uh, the quality of the liner. Now, great art. I don't like advertising, but great art do actually sell this liner. Um, this stuff from Belgium is slightly tougher. So it's, uh, but anyway, the great art sell brown liner, but they don't sell it in rolls. They only sell it in small sheets. Again. That's another problem, but you don't listen to us artists. We like it in rolls. Rose. So we can do big big liners, <laughs> like mm. A1 or double A1 mm. instead of just A2. Um, so once this is cut, now if I just show you, um, actually I'll just show you this. So this is actually the next one in the series. So this is it. So that is, um, th this is a drawing of um, this is pandemonium this is the bit that they're building and I've put it in this cage so it's, it's like um, he thinks he's so powerful and great um, a Lucifer but the only trouble is it's it's finite it's not very big and God's kind of going yes I know that much anyway um, so it's like in a museum like in here an exhibit it's a living exhibit you know so they're building this incredible anyway but so what I've done I've transferred it onto here and I've started to look at it, but it's around the studio, and already I'm going to I'm going to do more to it before I cut it. So there's bits in it, but I've I've worked it a lot. Now, if I show you, because I think I've got the drawing in here. Actually, I'm... No. No, it's just. I 
did actually put it in, but I think it's disappeared. Um, so you'll see, I was just going to show you how much it's changed already. No, it's not really. Anyway, so, so what's going to happen is, um, so already I'm starting to redraw this, but it's quite considerably changed from the original drawing. Okay, so then that's that, and then that's, actually this is the one before, so that just shows you the kind of, the amount of carving. And how long <clears throat> would that, did that Four or five days, solid. Um, so it's, it's, it's cutting it deep, and it's cutting it always to a rectangle, because I'm making a picture. Now this is just the first colour, so what I'm doing is I'm discovering the drawing first, then I'll print this like these, and then I will then start using, finding the colours that I want to. Now this is going to be a light dark contrast, so this will be, this will be, um, I will work this in yellows and violets and blues, so it's a light dark contrast, so it's, um, it's the second complementary, which will then be like some of these other prints that you can see around the walls which are a warm cold contrast. So I'll be playing, I'll be using different pigments and in watercolours probably, um, to, to paint onto a number of proofs of this and then I'll make extra blocks. So another four or five blocks, which will then print pigment colours. A block to each colour? Yeah. Or if, there's, if they're in such a way, I can do two colours in one block. Um, so that's the process. You, is it all freehand, or do you ever use like a, a ruler? As a never. Never. No. So even on some of these where you've done rooms with straight lines, and that's all. Yeah. It's all fully freehand. Yeah. Okay. But a lot of people don't go along with that. They think. No, no. I'm just saying. No, no, look, no. Look at those one behind you. You know, there's some very straight lines there. Yeah. And that's because that's you've got to have quite a steady hand to. Um, if I put a ruler over them. Oh, you'd, you'd see, see yes. Yeah, you'd see how see. really they're not yeah. very good. Look closely, and they're not so straight. They're, they're really quite wonky. Yes. At the distance, it doesn't yeah. look. Yeah. Okay. So it's all fully freehand. Okay. Yeah. If you used a ruler, would that change? Well, no. If uh, um, I don't know. it will you give a you use rulers. Yes. Yes. Of course. Yeah. No. If you want to use a ruler, then you know, by by all means. But it, it will, it will give a completely different yeah. feel. It's, it's like going into a Victorian building, yeah. and going into a medieval building. Yeah. No. It's like Liverpool Cathedral, yeah. where everything is is absolutely spot on, and you go into Durham, mm. yeah. or even yeah. Gloucester, and yeah. it looks like you know it's yeah, like no, no, I can see, yeah, you, know, you think is that pillar slightly bigger, mm. and that flute is slightly what, and suddenly you go nothing actually yeah, is symmetrical at all. It's all wonky, yeah. and because of that, you just think very good. Because it's like our face, yeah. you know. You know, our face. You divide oh, no, our face, it, and yeah. we're weirdos. Yeah. You know, that's a great thing to do. Very few people are exactly the same either side. Yeah. And then if you put this side next to that side, there, it's really weird. You don't recognise people, do you? No. Because so it's you know that kind of we're not symmetrical yeah. at all. And when you see symmetrical people, they're quite. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're they're kind of perfect. Yeah. It, in, in a way, in a way, it's a bit like that. Um, uh, Italian Renaissance perfection versus kind of Northern European yeah. non-perfection. So, you know, you get these paintings with very fat people, very thin people, very tall people, very short people, all in the same kind of painting. Against often in the Renaissance, they're all perfect. And you think, where do I fit in? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't kind of measure up. And often they're like in Botticelli, it's the same woman. You know, so it's, you know, like there's four of her. She's just in different poses. You just think, hmm. Anyway. Now, I wanted to show you um, these, which is um, the liner cuts that are behind me, because uh, so you can actually, so I'll pass them around so you can actually handle them. Um, because th this is the order that I did them in. Now, the interesting thing that you've got in the order here is it's a very different order that I started them. Um, so... If you're looking here, this is the first picture I did. Um, 
when I was in Belgium and I was so this, this is the line of cut this is the end thing but I did a, a drawing like you're seeing there and this is um I was just doodling and it was um I felt it was just like a stand it was just made up it's like a standing stone that's been overgrown and then what came into my mind was um out at sea and something was floating out at sea um is it showing yeah and um I thought, okay, you know, fine. Um, because I was growing up by the sea and my parents were keen sailors, I thought, oh gosh, you know, the sea, here it comes again, you know, in my, from my subconscious, all this stuff's floating up. And then, then this appeared. Now, the interesting thing about this is I love Devon, Cornwall, um, Dorset, that kind of area. So it's places by the sea and driving beside the sea. And then I, I, this van appeared. And I thought, oh yeah, yeah, a van in a lay-by and a person. And as soon as that happened, I thought, oh, there's a narrative coming in. And I, I love reading, I like detective stories, but I thought, well, maybe it's a, a whodunit. You know, there's, there's obviously a narrative coming here. So as soon as I started thinking, in this drawing, there's a narrative, then, of course, the next drawing is a, is a, is a dead body. So there's some standing stones, obviously a little bit further down the coast, and the detectives here have found, and these are other ones, in this stone circle, and there's a policeman there. And so they're beside the roads, and there's a kind of a, some kind of eclipse going on, and and they so there's a there's a there's a dead body. So who could it be? What's going on? So I thought, okay. Um, and then for some reason, um, I ended up in London. And now I I was nine years studying in London, um, in different colleges, Chelsea, uh, Slade Royal College. So I was cycling over in all sorts of places. So Blackheath, Greenwich, um, has always been in my life. Um, going across Blackheath in the middle of the night and vents of steam coming out of the things that people are saying, well, you know, that's, of course, you know, the, the, the Black Death escaping. Great. Um, good for the imagination. Anyway, these kind of buses and, and these areas of land, because no one builds on them, because of it, it is buried. That's where the plague victims are buried. Quite strange places. Wonderful, wonderful places. So this is a, a like a bus <coughs> arriving and there's this chap has arrived. So, oh yeah, there's a visitor coming from some connection. I haven't got a clue what's going on. I just thought, oh yeah, bus. Mm. Then, then I thought, well, I've got to have a. So this is so this is suburbia, um, and then what we have here is we got we got um, someone lying, whether they've collapsed, had a heart attack, or been murdered, and they're reading um, Siebold, um, uh, Rings of Saturn. Anyone read that? Fantastic book. You need to read it. Very poetical. Anyway. Um, so they've collapsed, and there's a, actually there's a Poussin, two Poussin paintings, which are, so I'm having a little bit of fun. Um, Man Killed by a Snake, and there's a, 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 a I've forgotten what the other one, um, yeah, The Flood. Um, so it's all about, it's all about things going on of judgment. And um, So anyway, he's, he's collapsed there. Um, then I thought it was about time to bring in um, uh, the detective. So this is the hero. So here we have the hero. And he's in contemplation. He's going to solve the problem. So he is the, and it's kind of you've got the, the moon, and but I, I when I when I need to solve something or think about something or be um, pondering over something, I like going right beside the sea, beside chaos, but standing on order. And um, so here he is. He's he's thinking, trying to solve the problem. Okay. Why, okay. why the stick? I don't know. <laughs> Oh yeah. Um, okay. Next one. Um, this is a kind of suburban garden, and you have him. Look, he's finding a bit of evidence. But here, look, there's someone looking. Okay. There's a kind of a someone hiding behind a bush. But he's he's picking up some evidence. So you know, evidence is found in a suburban garden. Um, and then, so I kind of thought about the detective. So this is kind of Watson and Holmes, um, at their laptop. Um, working it out, solving the problem already on on on, on the way, and then um, now this originally was was them two um, in the car on their way to to um, and and this is this is the clump of trees you saw at the beginning. So I'm already thinking, how can I how can I join this up? I'm running out of time. Um, but in this in this line of cut, I've made them baddies. Uh, I made this one a woman. So this was these were those two, but this is now look, a man. <laughs> French, you know, stripes, and this uh, very, um, very Parisian lady. 
So they're on their way trying to sort things out. So these are um, kind of baddies. And then, um, then this appeared, which is a kind of an archaeological dig. Now, this was the key print for jo Joanne when she, was, when she started. She picked this print up and went, archaeology. And she knew that what I was thinking about possibly doing something here. And she said, oh, it's, about, it's all about a dig. So um, this, was, this, this was the print that changed it for her. And um, she changed everything around, you see. So th these are digging stuff up. Um, then this is the stakeout. So this is, this is more like Hampstead. So there's, a, there's a people in a car here waiting, and there's a person cycling along, there's an old lady with a bag. Something's going on, they're waiting. There's a cat. And, um, and meanwhile, when I was working on this, cut, cutting this, Joanne said, I've got a thought of a fantastic title, Still Life with Blackbirds. And I said, I haven't got any blackbirds. <laughs> so I said, well, wait, I haven't cut this bit yet, so I'll put the blackbirds in. <laughs> so we've got blackbirds here, as you do in London. You get these huge birds, you know, carrion birds, just kind of floating around very odd places. And also starlings. I, I was in, um, where was I? Where was I? Somewhere recently. I, I, maybe it was London. Um, and I walked past the bush. And, uh, and this bush was kind of shaking like this. And I was thinking, what the fuck is going on? And then suddenly I looked in, and it was full of starlings. Yeah, and they were all... <laughs> like this. I mean, what's going on like this? And I went, <laughs> where, anyway. where did the name come from? Where did she get that from? Which one? No, she made it up. She just made it up in the moment? Yeah, well, she's a writer. That's what writers do. But it didn't mean anything at that time? No, oh, it is. She was already got her oh, story. Yeah. So that one. Then we have... Um, this, is a, this is the... This is kind of a Bulgar Bulver Bul Bulgravia Bulgaria. in London. So this is a nice salubrious area of London. Lots of money. And there, look, they're staking out the, the Watson and Holmes kind of characters. They're staking out this, there's a party going on. And, yeah, yeah, there's yeah, there's bad money, yeah. It's, it's not good. <laughs> and so they're, they're biding their time. They're just watching. So, yeah, that, that person's there. And then the second to last one. So this is then the... The detective here, and um, he's, he's he's done the tip off, arrest that. So the, this is kind of a European. So this is more like Belgium, where I, where I did it. And the, the the chap's walking out, and he's about to be arrested. And um, so there you go. And then the finale for me is the dead body dumped at sea. Okay. But you see what happens is see see so the boat. And, um, but what she's done is completely different, really. So if you see, so if I, if I just quickly do it, and I'll take this out so I can show you. So you start, start with this one, which is out at sea. And then these are the two baddies. Um, who, one's an archaeologist, and, um, uh, they're working a job where they nick stuff. So they nick clever bits of pottery in there. So they're on a dig and then they take the best bits. And then what do they do? They bury them. And then they try and work out plans to make more money. Um, but a baddie, he got arrested and he had to make a run. And then what we have here, um, these are the detectives. So they're no, no longer baddies, they're goodies again. Um, so these are the detectives on the on on trying to capture the the the, the bad archaeologists. Okay, the real bad bad archaeologists. So then this is the dig where it all starts, and one of the bad archaeologists knows that this special piece is going to be dug up again. Um, then this one is when they're on the dig, they go and um, he's making friends with various people, and um, they have to go and get bacon and eggs and things like that. So, so and. Uh, and this is this is um, this is part of the dig, and then when they're on the dig, um, he discovers that the other archaeologist is murdered, or has a heart attack, and then he has to hide, and escape. Let's see if I can get that one. Hide and escape here, and he's waiting outside because there's there's baddies that are going to be after him, um, and it's probably the chap who's on the dig, and then we're on this one. We're back in London. And he's trying to escape. And then suddenly he sees this strange man on a cliff. Um, 
Um, so he's not the protagonist, he's not the hero. Um, then this is, back, this is back in the dig again. And, um, and then he escapes. So he's basically on the run all the time. But in amongst this, there is the story that um, on the dig, um, the, the lady, uh, sorry, the man, the man and the, the, the two men, when he's digging up this precious, have you read all, have you all read the story? Yeah. When he digs up this story, there's a kind of like, a, not a curse on it, but um, th they don't want him to let go. And the birds are protecting him. Because what they did in the Iron Age, they often buried birds, lots of different types of birds, to protect whoever was buried. And you get all these blackbirds arriving to protect when they're, when they're trying to dig this person up and steal this, this very, very precious thing that we've kind of got a um, like, um, uh, kind of, you know, pseudo, kind of, yeah, but a kind of um, a, a wonderful object. And um, it's like the, the earth itself claims it and then the baddie he gets. And there's a flood and there's a storm and he gets washed away. So the, the kind of anti-hero does get away with it, but he's on the run again. So that's the story. So it's completely different. And the whole idea, what I'm getting really excited about, is that the, these prints, um, so these as a story, because in a way they're open-ended, you can juggle them around. And you can make up any story. You see, I'm, it's, it's quite interesting. Where it's, that's quite different with text. Text. It's virtually a text, isn't it? But it, the thing is, you read this and you think, is that, it's like, it's like this one, like, you know. Is this person being arrested? Or who's doing what? You just don't know. And it's a bit like witnesses at, you know, when accidents happen. You know, you, you ask everyone, what happened? And the police always say, you know, it's extraordinary how many different versions of the same thing that you get. You know, what we perceive and what we think and where we come to it or what we've really seen is quite interesting. Anyway, so that's that's what this show is. Um, that's what the that these are about. And it's I think it's quite a nice game, actually. But have you any questions? Yes. Um, those are just um, the way they're framed. Yeah, yeah. I notice, you know, normally, well, to me, a piece of whatever's put in the frame, glass is like, flattens it down. Yeah. Whereas there I see the glass must be out of you, because obviously, you know, you can see the paper being to curl and lift up. Yeah. Is, is the reason, is, can't you put the glass against the, the ink or? I don't want to. You don't want to? Right. Well, it, even if, even if I put a mount like the, like the painting, like, sorry, like the print behind yeah. you, yeah. Um, actually has a mount in front yeah, so, so the glass separating. mustn't the yeah. glass really must never ever touch any drawing or painting it because it will eventually stick to it, stick to it yeah. and then it's ruined so there you've got a small gap and yeah. that's why it's um these frames um uh, i'm owning up now these frames <coughs> are <Yeah>. sorry <laughs> oh, they're not they're not <laughs> <laughs> no no these are these are it's beautiful, beautifully expensive. Mate. Now these had um, another part of the series of the, oh, the sixty okay. prints, right. and to save me um, purchasing, uh, having made at a framer, Thank which you. these were made, um, another <laughs> another you know sixty no fifteen there are here, um, and, yeah. but personally, um, so they're box frames. Yes, and I. I prefer to see, though actually I know some of them are mounted, those ones, but I really prefer to see the whole bit of paper yeah, and right. and the way they float. I love floating with it. Now a lot of people don't, that's why I put some, the, the, the rest of these in um, on mount. But I personally prefer to see how, what the printer uh, has printed in relationship to the rectangle of the paper. Mm. Do you mind um, different interpretations? No, no, that's the whole lovely. Yeah. Would anything bother you? So no, actually, that's not that's not it at all. Well, because these are <laughs> because these are quite figurative in yeah. a way. Um, well, no, they're quite not quite. They're very figurative, um, and they're very ambiguous. Um, when it comes to the other pieces, like in the, in the series of um, sixty, the thoughts in search of a thinker. Um, you know, they're kind of equally ambiguous, and that's fine too. The, the title might. 
might help. But I mean, we had an interesting discussion at, um, at, at the university with my students about the whole thing of a title. And um, I, I really believe an image has got to work um, without anything. So if the title falls off or it gets lost or you, or you can't read it because it's in a foreign language, the, the work's got to work. It's got to do its business as a picture because it's, it's all it is, it's a picture. But what really excites me for relief prints, and this is really, really important for me, is that they stand for me, between because I'm a painter who makes prints and sculpts, and what these do is they stand between painting and sculpture. So if you look at the, especially the, the coloured, the, the pigmented prints, um, what's happening is the colour sits on other colour. And I can use the same pigments that I'm using, because it's basically mixed up pigment. Um, so it's the same pigment as I'm using in my paintings. But the way they sit on top of each other, they sit proud, the colours sit proud on top of each other. They're affected by what's underneath too. But they have a, a, a slightly three-dimensional quality. Um, the thing I like about um, uh, th them as, um, as because they have the, the carved quality that is so different to a painting. Though it's like a painting. In fact, I find my paintings are becoming more, more and more like my... my um, as, I mean, there's a couple of paintings there from Australia when I was in Tasmania. Um, the two side paintings, um, one of the submerged town and the other one of, um, um, the, of the unconscious um, and mining the unconscious. And the one in the middle is actually a, a beginning, uh, it's a little painting about Milton. Um, so the Mil it's, it's Milton the poet dreaming the dream. So he's, and of course he's blind at that time. But he's, it's like he's, he's dreaming and in his thought he's making an ex extraordinary character up. Though of course it's based on a biblical, on, on the biblical person of um, um, Lucifer. Um, so that's really, it's, it's playing with that idea and it's limiting them in a certain palette. But what I'm interested in is, is taking the pigment and the pigment quality, which is very haptic, that I get in my paintings and printing with them. And then printing them one on top of the other. So you get this very grainy or all different qualities that each pigment has. Rather than a lot of bought paint, it's just made to squeeze out always the same. So you get kind of sandpaper qualities and, and, and colours of that you just can't get apart from apparently in pigment. So they sit against each other. Um, so I find the qualities that I get in um, is the carved line. That's what I get really excited about. Mm. And the rhythm. And really, so much about painting is about good composition. So what's in front of you? Nothing. I was sitting in a hotel room in so in this Belgium. All came in out of your head with no yeah. reference material at all. No. Just looking or remember. No, because it is the subconscious. I just and what I find is I go to places. I go to different. Like I was with the students in Hassel, and and this was the first time I'd been to Hassel, so it was a very new experience. Um, what's lovely is the Belgian people. I mean, they're such lovely people, and they really like the English. It's really nice. Um, and the place I was staying was actually quite close to, actually quite close to Waterloo, it's quite interesting. But um, be, be, it's a really nice town. But I found in the evenings, you know, I'd done all the teaching, da, 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 and I'm sitting in my hotel room, um, and so I've got an empty page, and I, I, and I just start doodling, and what comes out. But what I find, it's like the Icelandic ones, what I found is that what comes out, um, I go, oh gosh, it's that. And this is, this is a lifetime of sailing with my parents in Chichester Harbour and also walking with my sons and having a, 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 an exhibition up in Lindisfarne and walking across the mud. And suddenly, I'm sitting in this hotel room in Iceland. Um, it was perishing outside. And I'm just thinking, and, and it's a wonderful, uh, Iceland, if you've ever been there, it's just the most extraordinary place. We're going to take our students up there soon again. Um, it's epic, it's big, and they're lovely people. But it was bitter, bitter cold. Um, you know, winds around and snow falling around. 
and you're sitting there and I'm thinking, well, what on earth is, and, you know, and, um, and out comes this, really. You know, out comes stuff about the, and it's like allowing the subconscious to, you know, what's really being important that I haven't talked about. And it was the time to do it. And I, I'm, I think it's one of my best set of prints. There's 10 of them, actually. You've only got five. There's another one around the corner, I think. Um, but it's about this strange sense of, in the sea, there's markers. Now, I don't, in the sea, they don't look like that. But, you know, I'd be sailing with my parents in the middle of the, middle of the English Channel. And suddenly there'd be, a, there'd be a thing. And you think, what? What's this for? It's because you know, there might be a sandbank. Or there might be something odd. And they're just saying to mariners, be careful. Um, and it's the way the kind of, the constellations um, uh, act as markers. And it's this strange kind of world of metaphysical kind of placing of things. Um, yeah. Should I try it? So yeah, I, go on. So just looking on this one, where you've got these little fine lines. Oh, yes, yes. That must be incredibly difficult to do without like nudging a fraction of a millimetre and then you've lost your black line. Okay, yeah, I was going to show you. Right. You know, I, I would like to say, but there's almost as though there's one little bit where you might have... Okay, let me show but you. But just to try to carve that. Right. I wear different glasses. Okay. So probably for, um, most of the cutting... Is small stuff, and this yeah. this 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 V one. It's very small V. Yeah. So. And so you do a little bit at a time. You don't just run it down. No, no, you're asking for trouble. No, okay. No, I'm not saying. Yeah, I thought you'd just run a line, but you do just a little millimeter at a time. Yep. Oh yeah, very fine. Yes, no, I see. Yeah, yeah, okay. Ah, right, I see, right. So, so I'm see. slowly, slowly cutting it through. Yeah. And then, of course, all the time I'm I'm looking at how it works. And there'll be bits that, you know, I'm undecided about. So I'll just, you know, I'll leave, so them. leave it. So I'll leave it for a while. Yeah. But, um, and slowly build up through. Yeah. But I won't print until the end. No. Unless I'm really uncertain, but I very rarely do that. I see it through to the end. And then what I do is I I will print it um, as I as I feel um, it's starting to you know I, as a complete piece take a proof and then and see what it looks like. and then see what's looking like. and there will be some bits where I'm, I'm yeah. I was kind of going shall I do this yeah. shall I do that and then I go okay I thought that was wrong I, I, I thought I needed to get rid of that but there are bits that I can easily get rid of. Of course, but you can't put things no, back. No, put it's quite back. sink, so you can. Yeah. So, you can go so far. Yeah, there'll be can't. bits in this that I'm kind of putting in. Like I've put these lamps in along here. Yeah. I've added some very small people because I love this sense of There's some more people here, but I'm ready for the fact I might just lop them out. <laughs> but <laughs> cut the heads off. No, no just, because them. all of that could go. Yeah. And then it completely changes the front. Yeah. But what I might do is I might do five of those, just to just for the fun of it, oh, because see. actually it's quite a nice thing with yeah. them there, and then get rid of them. Do you um, have happy accidents, Will? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but an accident sounds like I've got rid of something that I didn't. It's more normally where I'm doing something and I I haven't cut it yet, and I go. It could be the fact that this person and there's there was another person, behind, and I think, oh no, I think I'll put him leaning over. And I haven't got rid of the drawing underneath yet. And I think, I quite like him. I quite like the fact there's two people there. And it's that kind of thing where I'm half in the middle of something. And then I think, oh, I think I'll leave that. Um, yeah, there was one here that's a doorway through to the end. And I was looking at that thinking, oh, that's a bit black. Maybe I should. And it's like, oh, that's nice. And there's a bit that I'm kind of, you know, if that undecidedness. You just leave it, and then I'll cut it out if it doesn't work. Because um, once it's gone, it's gone. That's about it, really. So it is a slow. This this one. Um, yeah, you see, when 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 I was um, 
Absolutely. This whole piece here, this, had an empty sky. And um, for, for, for a long time. So what I thought was, you know, it was against this just kind of whiteness. I thought this is really boring. Uh, okay, these lines were going out. But I thought it needs this kind of sense of this movement happening. I thought, well, I'll do that when I do the colour. I thought, no, 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 no. It, it can, why not have it now? And what I found is that because it's, a, because it's a hard surface and because all the blacks were in with a felt tip pen, I could just get a, a soft pencil and just scribble all over it. And then I think, that load of rubbish. I'm just going to rub it all out. And then just keep going until you think, that's it. So the whole thing of gesture. So these are very gestural against things that started off actually quite gestural and then they kind of calmed down into, and then you shape them and cut them into what I wanted them to. And as you'll see, the drawings really do change quite considerably. But this, for me, has got that sense of, you know, kind of things pulling up, which I wanted it to. Um, and equally, uh, actually equally in this one, th this one, just before I was about to cut, I was stare staring at it. And um, I put extra clouds in. And then I've darkened the whole of the back of this. Now, it wasn't like that before. It was more illuminated. Because it's just like, if you're not careful, and some of these, you'll see, some of these are very, very li pure linear. But the one thing about liner cuts you can do, you can have these fantastic dark areas, dark against light and then different line quality. So you get different textual kind of sensations, which is really, really what I've constantly tried to play in each print, so they have a different kind of life to them. Otherwise it can just be boring to look at. Mm -hmm. um, but it's the punctuation of the, the deep shaped black shapes against the white shapes, which is, yes. even though it makes a figurative in this, ta in this case, it is, a, a, it is about rhythm. It's a kind of music. And that, for me, is deeply intoxicating. I, th I find them very, very musical. This one in particular actually reminds me very much. Is it William Nicholson with the Less of the Alphabet? He did. And Yes, the, and that one to me almost yeah. looks. Yeah, I like when I've got quite a few. <laughs> you have, you've got yeah. some. Yeah, yeah, they're nice, aren't they? Very, very. Uh, yeah, those are liner cuts, aren't they? They're woodcuts. Ah, woodcuts. Right? Yeah, and woodcuts. He would have used the same tools that I'm using. And so you do a woodcut because it's more durable surface. Yeah, be harder, harder yeah. to work. Yeah, you yeah, can print more things with them. Oh, I see. You do more prints. With but it. but it's got the the wood he was using has got has got um, you know a grain to it. Yes. Um, yeah, oh, they're, 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 they're beautiful things. Yeah, they are, aren't they? Yeah. 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 yeah, I got them at the Whittington Press. They often have these open days. Mm -hmm. And they reprinted most of, oh, a lot they? of his stuff. And I got oh, them they for... reprinted them? Oh. Yeah, I think they've, um, someone lost the plates after that. But, um... yes, I've seen them in galleries, you know, and so on. Oh, yeah, the colour ones and the yeah, lithographs. The oh, yeah, yes. they're fantastic. Yeah. 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 Yes, I've got a copy of London Types from 18... 97. That's right. a fabulous, fabulous series of lithographs. So what he did, yes, he made, that, made the woodcuts yeah, that, and then printed them onto lithographic. Yes, there's all these different characters, aren't they? Yeah. And yes, yeah. The but it's what he's doing them. with the colours. They're very mm. pared down, but he's really using black against white. Yeah. No, it's fabulous. Mm. No, it's just that one there, the, the, the figure. Yeah, yeah. It, it just, it it's quite a bit da uh, Caspar David Friedrich, which oh, yeah, is, no, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's that kind of Thinker. <laughs> Thinker by the shore. Think about yeah, the ex. I, 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 I completely, you know, yeah. feel with that. I love being beside the sea and yeah. just, it may, I really think very clearly beside the mm. sea. Anyway. Lovely. Yeah. There you go. Yes. No, I'm very transformative. Yeah. Very good. But I, I suppose, you know, as a, as a hobby, you know, obviously you're a professional, but as a hobby, lino cut must be one of the, one of the simplest things, because you know that those are your tools, aren't they? Well, it's interesting. I mean, one of the most not not comical, but actually, I, I find it slightly sad is that w when I do show work, people go, "Oh yeah, liner cuts." 
Yeah, I can do that. I know all about that. Um, and, and, and as if, you know, you know, and then off they go. And then I see them looking at something else. They go, oh, this is, this is real. You know, this is real work. And you just think. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I see what you mean. Because you sort of think kids do. Kids well, potato do school, cuts. Don't they? Potatoes. Potato cuts. I mean, yeah. it is a great <laughs> medium. But yeah. um, it's. Um, yeah, I think if it didn't have the word lino, because the lino gives it. Yeah. It? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, also. You always think woodcuts is sort of a bit more of a lino. Oh, yeah, uh, well, it, the, the thing about everything, all these. All, all prints. It's as only good as the drawing. Yes, it is. Yeah. And the, the thing is, um, I think it's one of the great mediums. I really do. I think it's wonderful. Well, it's a relief print, but um, but you'll find if you do woodcuts, even on softer woods, you it, well, you can easily get some serious good, damage yeah, to yeah, your. I have. So That's why I've stopped yeah. on the um, the wood. You can use MDF, can't you? Yeah, but you'll that can damage you too. Oh, okay. Anything repetitive, mm. there's yeah. there's just enough softness. Mm. Um, it's there's enough give in this. It's hard enough, but it's got enough give. Mm. Um, and the fire is even softer. Oh goodness me! <laughs> Don't even talk Spray about it. Down it's pink. Pink. It's a, it's a pink. There is a pink. Yeah. Wobble. Yeah, it's um, it's a p, it's a plastic, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, it's 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 might be better, but I don't know. Um, I want something that's because my lines get some of them. As yeah, you see, incredibly they're incredibly fine. fine. No, no, of course. Yeah. And the last thing you want is because mm. you know if, if 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 I'm doing them in black and white, great. But it's when I start doing more of the other colours underneath, and then the the black and white will might not be black, but it might be a dark grey, and like in some of those, you know, you want that to be existing by the time you print it. Are these going to be, are they destined to be bound as well? Yeah, um, we're going to make a book. Um, and we're asking, uh, um, a kind of response from um, some other writers. So that's kind of in progress. And there'll be some papers about, I, I'm writing a piece about drawing as a way of thinking. But also the whole thing of, of, of narrative is quite I mean I really love the idea that you can re re schedule you know reshuffle these and they're a completely different story mm -hmm. they're whatever you want it reminds me a bit of that story stage though for your children when you give them to them you give them I think if you gave them a picture you do this quite often you know you will help therapeutically in their story yeah yeah Reading and, and yeah. Mm. Right, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you.